I'm Matt Wheelis, Public Health Officer from Marin County with a status update for September 8th. Today's topic is variants. If you've been following national pandemic news, you've been introduced to some new characters, Eris or EG5, which is slowly emerging as the next dominant strain, and more recently, Pirola or BA2.86. You may also have seen how avian influenza may be evolving into more concerning variants. It can be a bit confusing and even alarming, so I'd like to explain how we look at variants to predict and prepare in Marin. We'll start by stepping back to, the arc, to look at the arc of this pandemic. It's clear that COVID-19 is a permanent addition to our world. It's also extremely likely the worst is behind us because we have protection through immunity from vaccines and infections and tools like masks, testing, vaccines, and treatments. And then also that our future experience will be partly determined by the variants we're facing at any given time. And for that reason, it's important to have a shared understanding of how variants happen and why they matter. First is to recognize this is normal and expected. SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19, is constantly evolving. In fact, here in the Bay Area, we were among the first to describe this when we found that our earliest cases in spring 2020 were already a mix of genetically distinct strains, some from Seattle, some from Europe, and some from China. We joined with partners at UCSF and the state to publish those findings in the journal Science. So we knew early on to expect a steady stream of variants, and we've seen dozens, Delta, Omicron, XBB and its subvariants, and now Eris and Pirola. The letters and numbers don't really matter much. What matters is that this is how the virus rolls and we'll have to roll with it. So that's one lesson. The appearance of a new variant shouldn't be cause for alarm in itself because it's natural and will keep happening. This means we'll need to keep surveillance systems in place to monitor these changes and continue to update our tools like vaccines like we do for flu. When I hear about a new variant on the horizon, these are the three questions I ask to predict its impact for us. The first is how transmissible is it? That is, how easily does it jump from one person to the next? Second, how strong is our immunity against it? That is, how well does the immunity in our bodies that we've gained from vaccines and infection fight it off? And third, how sick is it making people? Meaning, how likely is it to cause severe illness? We call that virulence. Transmissibility, immune evasion, and severity. So how do we answer those questions? When variants first emerge, they get studied in the lab. But a far better way to protect our experience with the new variant is to observe how fast it's spreading in impacted communities and whether it's sending a lot of people to the hospital. With BA 2.86, we don't have enough real life data to really predict. And it's important that we not get ahead of ourselves forecasting based on lab data alone. That's a lesson we can carry forward in our response to news stories about this new variant or any other. We're not seeing strong evidence that Eris, for example, is having much effect in Marin, now two months after it was first detected, and we've seen cases now at low levels for about two months. When we take the approach of describing variants in terms of true community impact, here's how it's played out over the past three years in Marin. Every variant that has become dominant in Marin has had either higher transmission or better immune evasion. Omicron is a great example. We shouldn't be surprised that a strain that spreads faster becomes more common and eventually takes over. It's important to note that none of the new variants we've seen have made people much sicker than previous variants. In fact, the average severity of illness has continuously declined. Your odds of landing in the hospital if you're infected are now less than 10 times what they were three years ago. This is due to a combination of better immunity, treatments, and changes in the virus. So to summarize, we should all expect that the parade of variants will continue, though it may happen at a slower pace. When a new variant appears, we want to ask about three things, transmissibility, immune response, and severity. And we'll rely more on real life data than lab data to protect risk. So far, no variants have caused increased severity of disease, and we're gaining better and better protection. The tools we have work really well masks and prevent infection, and vaccines and treatments can prevent severe illness. If the news about variants worries you, you can rest assured we're worrying for you. It's our job. You can follow along on our website as we're monitoring for new strains, watching our hospitals for surges, and getting treatments and updated vaccines out as soon as they're available. Your next option will be coming soon with a fall booster, and that will be the subject of an upcoming video. Thank you for doing your part.